Hi, and welcome to another episode of Mash Hacks. My name's Ben Carl, and today we're doing a bit of an experiment. Um, what we're doing is a four vessel setup, um, and today this is the first time I've used my four vessels. Uh, you may have seen the prop drilling episode. Uh, this is the rig that has come from that. Um, essentially, what we're doing is testing whether or not, or rather, how well our heat transfer works between our boiler and our three vessels. Um, I'm actually doing a 15 litre batch uh, brew, um, which is just a standard uh, pale ale. I think it's got some Warrior, Centennial, and some Galaxy. Uh, it should be really good. Uh, so let's get into this brew. Deck. Okay, so the first vessel I've got here is the boiler. Uh, it's hooked up to a temper contro temperature controller and you can see that I'm on 61 degrees now. Um, it's pumping glycol, or well, it's heating up glycol and it's pumping it through the water side of the heat exchanger, just over here. And uh, these pumps are fantastic by the way, the mag drive pumps. They're excellent. Now what's happening is, and it's a bit of a logistical nightmare at the moment on this bench, but I'm also pumping hot water from my hot liquor tank out of the spigot through a pump, through a flow controller, into the heat exchanger, and then back out the back there, behind all the pots, into the return inlet just on the side. So this guy's coming up to temp, and I've also got, I don't know if you can see, the probe just sitting in the side in the thermal there. I've got my uh, temp temperature controller again on this side, but I'm just using it as a thermometer. Um, and it's 58 degrees, so we're sitting about three, two to three degrees, or more like three to four degrees behind our boiler. So coming together, the two temperatures actually happens quite quickly. The problem lies in having a large enough boiler with enough liquid in it to act as a buffer so that once you've got it up to temp, it can withstand losing that amount of heat to bring this volume up. Okay, so I've got my system up to temperature. I've got my strike water sitting at 73 degrees and I want 71. I've given myself a two degree buffer for sort of transferring into different pots, hoping it only comes down by about two degrees. It's all right if it doesn't. Um, the first problem I've come across is how to account for all of the liquid in the lines. I've got a lot of lines running right now. Um, I'm pretty sure it's close on six meters of lines. So. Oh, probably just on the vessel side, just on the food side, it's probably closer to four. But if I need 10 liters of strike water and I put my grains in and I'm going to do a bit of a uh, vol off, and then when it runs clear, I'm going to hook it back up to the uh, heat exchanging system again. Um, how do I account for the liquid in the lines? So I'm just going to run with ignoring the lines. I'm going to say that because I'm going to end up losing all of the liquid in the lines anyway, I may as well just stick to the volumes in the pots and just ignore whatever happens in the lines. And I'm just gonna see what happens doing that logic. One lesson, um, when dealing with uh, pumps and pots, is make sure your pumps are below the pot uh, water line so that they prime and so that they're continuously fed water. Uh, they really hate being choked up from behind. Um, because this is a mag drive pump, it's quite okay to limit the flow um, after the pump, it's too hot to touch, <laughs> so we can limit the flow down, even slower, we'll let it right back up again, it's quite fine. Um, and that's it, yeah, make sure you get pumps are prime. Right, I'm going to get my strike temperature um, back up again after the sort of juggling I've been doing, I've just really let my taps drop. So I'm at 65 now, I'm going to get it back up to 71 because it's already in the pot. I don't need to account for any sort of difference in or drop in temperature for, by putting it in the pot. Um, I'll mash in at 71 degrees and I'll come back then. Okay, we've just come up to temp again, <laughs> this time in the mash tun. Uh, we're sitting at 71.6 degrees. I want 71, close enough. Um, Let's mash in. All right, so 
that was approximately 10 litres of water to approximately 3 kilos of green. My calculator said 71 degrees, should bring that down to 66. Oh, well, I'm going to recirculate. I'll give that two minutes to sit, to settle. Um, then I'm going to do a quick ball off and then I'm going to set up the recirculation. this one back in and then do it again just to make sure. Tell you what though, I feel people's pain when they say it's a really annoying to uh, brew in an apartment because it is. So looking at that now, that's more than clear enough to start recirculating. Now Probably an important thing to let you know I'm doing while well, recirculating the green bed is I've got a pretty powerful pump on down the bottom here. But I think it's very important that you don't pump at full power, especially um, while matching. I mean, while you're doing your other research, it's probably fine, but matching you do not want to be doing full power. I'm having real trouble with this hose kinking. I need a heavier grade hose. Uh, if you've got kinking, just buy the thick stuff. Um, so what I'm using to restrict the flow is just a three-piece ball valve, but with two female barbs, or male barbs, but two barbs on either end. Um, and I'm just basically going to let it trickle through to start with, especially. Just enough so that it primes itself, but it doesn't go too far. Probably about halfway open. And um, that's on this one. Don't choke it from behind the pump. Um, you'll ruin your pump. You want to make sure you choke it from the front, or after the pump. I'm surprised, uh, one thing I've learned from this is I'm surprised how responsive the temperature controllers are and when you use a plate heat exchanger, we've got quite a big one, but using that heat exchanger, the temperatures on either side, so the boiler and the mash tun in this case, they come to an equilibrium quite quickly. Um, I'm really surprised at how quick each one will find that sort of level, that equilibrium. So my boiler was sitting on roughly 70 70, oh gee, I think it was about 72 to 74, um, should pay better attention. Um, and my mash tun had got down to 60 degrees. In the time I've been talking to you, the boiler is down to 68 and the mash tun is at 62.5, climbing to 63 really quickly. So that's the sort of responsive, responsiveness I'm talking about. It, it really uh, exchanges heat, go figure. Okay, so the plan is I'm going to um, batch sparge this mash. It's been sitting here for just about an hour now, uh, coming up on 55 minutes. Um, I've had to swap over the recirculation from my mash tun to my hot liquor tank again now to get that up to sparge temps, so we'll shoot for 80 degrees. Um, I'm gonna batch sparge, so I'm gonna basically just drain this one, pop it in here, fill it back up again, give it a stir, let that sit for five minutes, and then take pretty much whatever I need out and fill it up. I'm probably only going to be able to get, you know, yay high on my kettle. This work is clear. That is just, I'm pretty sure that's the clearest work I've ever taken out. I cannot believe that. It's like, uh, and the coloured water. <laughs> um, so it turns out recirculating it constantly for the hour really helps with this initial clarity. Um, I'm not sure how much of a benefit this will have overall, probably not too much, um, but gee there's just there's just no grain in that whatsoever. Not even a haze, it's just crystal clear. Note to self, that's uh, pretty damn hot. Use the Mmm, smells delicious. So if you take a look, sparge water still heating up. We're at 
Um, mash looking good changed everything from that and our kettle is looking nice good colour alright so I've just come up to temperature on our hot liquor tank um, it's now sitting at 80 degrees um, which is our sparge temp and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 9 litres of hot water from there put it in the mash tun give it a really good stir let it sit for two minutes um, just to settle. And I'm going to boil off um, and I'm going to then ladder out that nine liters into the boil kettle. Um, I'm then going to heat up the boil. Now I've already got um, over on this side my boiler getting up to temperature. I want to get it to 115 degrees. Um, I've got glycol in there of course so it's not going to boil out or away uh, so I can keep the lid on and contain all of the water. Um, so let's get started doing our sparge. Okay, so I've managed to get 15 litres into this pot and it is full. 19, li <laughs> 19 litre pot my ass. That is barely... It fits 16 or 17 maybe. Um, so there you go, one warning. <laughs> that pot's a lot smaller than it says it is. Um, so I've actually got... Well, I had 102 degree glycol on this side. Um, I'm going to try and, and this is the real experiment, get this to boil because my boiler is above boiling temperature. If I can keep it up at about 100 and, or anything above 100, I'm hoping that this will uh, you know, turn out higher than 100 as well. Uh, so time will tell. I'm just a little worried about uh, boil overs at this stage because that is not a lot of headspace. Um, just a quick update, I'm approaching 85 degrees in the uh, pot. You can see the regular foam starting to form, uh, taking quite some time to get up to heat. I imagine it's because we've got 15 litres here, we've got 10 litres there, and one poor little element is trying to heat everything. Um, it'll get there eventually. Um, with all this circulation, like that's a lot of exposed piping and exposed metal that uh, can radiate the heat away. So hopefully it can bring everything up to a boil. Um, I'm going to uh, continue to wait for a little while. It's been about 20 minutes, I think. Um, hopefully within the next half hour we can get a boil started. Okay, so I've managed to get the boil up to 100 degrees, um, which means the plate chiller is now at 100 degrees. Uh, and I've noticed something really interesting about the way the wort is almost boiling. So if we just come over here and have a look, you can see boilers at 100 degrees now. Um, if you look at the pipes sort of on the pre-plate chiller side, they're all pretty you know, normal, you don't notice anything weird about them. But if you look at the liquid coming out of the plate chiller, um, it's full of steam and this is amazing. So I don't know how well you can see up the back there, but there's steam bubbles going all the way along the pipe all the way at the back there. You can see steam start to sort of rise and all the way by the time you get up to this end it's basically half steam, half uh, wort. Well there's at least a few bubbles at the top and then you notice that as it comes out it comes out uh, with the bubbles on top. So I know that it's at a couple of degrees below boiling now. It's probably at 98, 97 so I'm going to give it a little bit more time as well before I start the boil timer. But uh, yeah, just interesting to see. I wonder if I can get the wort in this pot itself to bubble or if I'm just going to get this sort of stream of steam coming out the top uh, on top of, you know, just about boiling wort. Right, I thought I'd just show you um, probably the next stage of this boil. Uh, it's only been a few minutes um, now, but I'm starting to really get solid bubbles in the uh, in the tubing. Now I've just taken a measurement and the liquid around the outside certainly isn't boiling but if you look at this tube now it's going nuts in terms of uh, air or rather steam in the uh, silicon tubing. And you can see 
you know, as it comes out, it's just bubbling away. So, uh, a couple of interesting questions I've got for myself really are, um, there was very little hot break, uh, I imagine because it's just been circulating this whole time, that a uh, hot break would find it quite difficult to form. Um, but also, you know, boiling in this way where it's really only sort of boiling in this tube and once it comes out, you know, the whole volume itself isn't at boiling temperatures. It's almost there. This is quite high. I think it's 96, 97. But, um, you know, is, is boiling this way enough to sort of drive off all the uh, bits I don't want? Okay, so just quickly. I've turned on the stove because I realised I wasn't going to get a proper boil um, with just the boiler alone at 101 degrees, which is the highest it's managed to get to. But have a look at this. So I'm going to turn this off now, but this is what it looks like when it's actually boiling and pumping at the same time, which is pretty crazy. I'm going to turn that off. Oh shit. <laughs> It's still going. Look at that steam build up. So this is just, I'm guessing, yeah it is too. Look, it's just steam coming out of this plate chiller. Um, wow, didn't expect that. So I've turned off this pump now, so there's no more liquid going through that. I'm actually gonna turn off the, um, this one as well, so that this can cool down, the plate chiller, which would be mighty hot right now. Um, and I'm also going to turn off our boiler, which you notice now, as soon as I stop circulating, this thing is uh, starting to climb. And I know that this will boil reasonably soon, so I'm going to turn that guy off, let him cool down now. And now the traditional signs of boiling start to appear. I, uh, I have a feeling that if you're going to boil using a recirculation method, make sure well and truly you can get your whole volume above boiling. Because from what it looks to me, it never really reached the hot break and or the boiling sort of point. So I'm going to let this boil properly now just on the stove and uh, yeah, there you go, rolling boil. So. Uh, yeah, I'll let this boil now properly and well, there you go. There's uh, some results from that experiment. Okay, doke, so I'm going to finish up by um, just completing the boil. Um, the rest is all, you know, part of the course. I'm going to no-chill this one because it is now 10 to midnight and I don't feel like chilling. <laughs> um, a good, good uh, experiment. Uh, we've sort of had a play with heat transfers. I found out that uh, the logistics of a four vessel system is you know, pretty complicated and uh, fiddly. I've spilt you know, grains, I've you know, overfilled pots, I've done everything. Um, so uh, a couple of the key things here, I guess, are one 2400 watt element isn't enough to boil it's the boiler and this pot. Uh, it just didn't quite get there. Maybe if I'd insulated more, or maybe if I had a lid and, you know, uh, I don't want to put a lid on the boil, but you know, if I sort of helped retain heat better, it probably would have worked. But I think at this stage, it's looking like I might just give it a hand with the stove and then maybe bump up my boiler, uh, whack another element in it. Uh, uh, sorry, yes, put another element in the pot and uh, run it off the second circuit. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll leave it there. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments on this sort of system or you know uh, the experiment going on, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'll catch you later. Cheers. Oh, <laughs>